today on Locked on Tigers. You are Locked on Tigers, your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Friday. Happy Friday, April 22nd, 2022. Thanks for making Locked On Tigers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. What what a day. What a day, what a day Thursday was, eh? What a game. Uh, the Detroit Tigers win. Three to nothing against the New York Yankees in Comerica Park, right in front of the home crowd. It's a beauty. A um, lot of controversy in this game. A lot of emotions, I guess, is probably, I don't know if it's as controversial as it is just emotional. Just an emotional game for, for the entire city of Detroit, for everybody. We're going to break it all down here. Uh, first and foremost, I realized, I didn't realize until after I, well, after I had posted it. I, I went in and re-listened to one of the parts of my uh, of, of yesterday's show. My mic was just not plugged in. So that's why the audio might have been like weird or worse quality than it normally is because I, it was just like my my computer's mic instead of my actual like real mic. So that's why that happened. I apologize for that. Uh, we all we all have our days, apparently. Um, Tigers win this one, three nothing. Beautiful game, really good performance by a lot of people, really impressive performance by a lot of pitchers. I guess we can start off with, I mean, we should probably just start off with Miggy, right? We probably shouldn't beat around the bush. The elephant in the room, Miguel Cabrera goes 0 for 3 with an intentional walk in the eighth inning, it would have been. Um, look, look, I, I love Detroit. I love this city. No, nothing. There are very few things on this planet that bring a smile to my face more than the city of Detroit and the people within it. Love this team. Love this city with, with everything I have, man. Incredible. Just an, an incredible moment for a Thursday one o'clock game, a weekday one o'clock game. And. We get over 20K show up, and on top of that, we get an infamous and, and will forever be famous in Tigers lore, a, a Yankees suck chant. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. You can't ask for too much more than that. Could have asked for 3,000, I guess, but what are you going to do? And Miguel Cabrera explained after the game, you know what? It was probably the right call. And I had three other at-bats, and we got the win. So all is good. And I respect the hell out of him for it. Because at the end of the day, he's right. It sucks to hear, but he is he is correct. It, it's purely situationally, if you take out the, the emotions of 3K, it, it makes sense. Now, is that going to stop me? From from tweeting and, and screaming that the Yankees are scared? Absolutely not. Should it stop you? Should, should you go, oh, well, it was the right decision. I'm not going to do the Yankees suck chant. No. Let loose, baby. Let it fly. They deserve it still. It's still the Yankees. What are we talking about? You'd still be a fan. But at the end of the day, it... it it, it did kind of make a little bit of sense. Lefty up in Meadows. Mm, makes a little sense. But that being said, karma's a five-letter word, ain't it? It's a five-letter word. It's beautiful. Beautiful thing this game is. Beautiful game. Beautiful game. Uh, the, the offense wasn't as great as it could have been. We're still trying to get over that hump offensively. I don't really care today. What what an awesome environment. What an awesome atmosphere. What a great game of baseball. Fantastic pitching performances. 
The, the, the stadium was electric and lively. Miggy's happy. His family's there. I'm not going to ask for too much more than that, man. We shut out the Yankees. We finally got a win. I'm all right. I'm all right. Still, it, it's Yankees suck forever. I still back the chant entirely. And all, they deserve all the slander they get. Can't, But not, not going to kill my vibe today. Not going to kill my vibe. Great, great afternoon for the Detroit Tigers. The offense... We can get to the rest of the offense, I guess, uh, while we're on the topic of Miggy. Like we said, he went 0 for 3 with the intentional walk. Uh, Robbie Grossman picking up a lot, a lot. Uh, has been really, really solid lately. There is – you knew he was going to come around. You knew all these guys are eventually going to come around. Jamer Candelario continues to struggle up there. Uh, Jonathan Scope really laboring up there. But Robbie Grossman, the last, I want to say three, maybe even four games, really since he came back from his injury that we thought was going to put him on the IL and didn't, uh, since he came back from that, he, he's been he's been pretty good. I mean, swung a very hot stick today, three for three with a walk. Can't get too much better than four plate appearances, four times on base. Uh, the OPS is now up to 600. So in one game, he he raises his OPS. What was it? It was like 409 or something on yesterday's show, some low 400s. Now it's now it's in the 600s. So we'll take it. We'll take it. Not not going to complain from that. Like I said, Scopey and Candelario continue to to labor. Uh, I I don't think they're uncompetitive at bats though. I still have faith that they're going to be fine and and turn it around. Candelario especially just getting some really weak contact uh, on the ball. That at bat in the eighth was was brutal. That was really tough. Uh, that's yeah. Thankfully, we ended up getting our insurance, and on top of all that, Gregory Soto is the dog, so none of it mattered. But you you really got to <laughs> can't can't have a slow dribbler. That was like easily worst case scenario. Besides like a triple play, I guess that that was pretty much worst case scenario from Candelario there. Uh, Miggy, we already talked about Austin Meadows. Look, man, I, I love this dude to death. And like, I know he had, he had what three strikeouts this game. I I, I know that's not the, the greatest game in the world. And that hit that was out there, you know, not, not, not a cheap hit, but not a crushed ball either. Right. Uh, but who the Babip gods are on his side currently and have been for the entire pretty much start of the season so far. Uh, and to come up in, in that moment, to ha- that moment, like they intentionally walked Miguel Cabrera on the verge, on the cusp of 3K to get to you instead. So to come through in that moment is just so cool. So I, I, I'm just happy for him regardless. Very cool moment and, and definitely made Soto's job in the ninth a whole Heck of a lot easier. Spencer Torkelson, I thought, put together a lot of really good at-bats this game. I thought this was a great game from Torque at the plate. Got the one hit, obviously. Had a couple other hard-hit balls in play. Really, really liked his approach. Willie Castro, uh, look, man, like I'm, I'm glad he got the hit. But what, what, what inning was that where he single-handedly? Like, people talk about Ricky Henderson. And how he was able to completely take over a game, right? Like John Boys has like the the fantastic the a lot of stuff on Ricky Henderson, honestly, and and it's deserved. And people talk, you know, Ricky would draw a walk, and, and it was a, a three base walk. People would call it because he'd draw a walk, and then he'd steal second, and then he'd steal third, and then on a ground ball with the infield in, he'd still make it home. And like Ricky Henderson just single handedly scores a run. Willie Castro did like the furthest thing possible from that in that one inning tonight, well, during the day yesterday, where he had a fielder's choice ground out to cause one out and then got caught stealing second to end the inning and, and cause another out. So you don't even get credit for the hit on the fielder's choice and then you get caught stealing and you're responsible for two outs and like three pitches. So... I I think most people know my opinion of of Willie St- Willie Castro and where he stands within the organization. 
he has to be up right now because of all your injury problems. So, like, I'm not saying, you know, get him off my team. He's probably going to get a lot of starts. And I, it's either that or Harold. So, like, I'm not against it. But um, when we're healthy again, I, I, I would like to maybe see a little less of Willie. And then Victor Reyes. Everybody loves to always at me on Twitter whenever Victor Reyes does literally anything. Uh, I got a couple when he made the catch in center field, the over-the-shoulder kind of basket-y catch. Uh, and then, obviously, I got a ton when uh, when he got the double there late. It uh, uh, He's play, he's swinging a hot stick, man. He's playing well. I'll gladly take it. I'll gladly take it. This was certainly not a, a fantastic offensive performance. We had one run going into the eighth inning. But, I re- again, I, I'm going to keep reiterating what I said yesterday. I really like the approach at the plate by pretty much everybody. They're not getting overpowered. They're taking pitches. They're being patient. They're waiting for theirs. They're just not getting lucky and and sometimes not putting hard contact on the balls that they are giving you in the zone. And eventually, I have full faith that that will turn around. I still very much believe in this lineup. Okay, let's get into the pitching. But first, I got to tell you all about Built Bar. You got to try the puffs. You have to try the puffs. If you haven't, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars. Puffs are the first ever protein-infused marshmallow. They're fluffy. They're marshmallowy. They're not just a protein bar. They're a treat, and they're covered in 100% real chocolate. Puffs are a fan favorite with some incredible flavors. Yummy cinnamon churro, coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie. They're all so good. They're going to be your new favorite if they're not already. I assure you, Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate, and that is the Puffs included 100% Real chocolate, low calorie, high protein. Most built bars contain 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, 17 grams of protein. Compare that to a candy bar, which usually has about 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. Mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, and new for this month, white chocolate cookies and cream. They're all delicious. New flavors are coming out all the time. If they think a flavor might be good, they'll make it. It will be delicious and good for you. Because at Built Bar, they're all about the taste. They make it taste delicious first, then figure out how to make it healthy. And I don't know how, but they pull it off every single time. So go to Built.com right now. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off of your order. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. Also got to tell you guys about Blue Nile Jewelry. Mother's Day is around the corner, and they are the perfect online jeweler to get your Mother's Day gift. BlueNile.com is the original online jeweler. Since 1999, they've helped millions of couples create their perfect engagement rings as well. Blue Nile is committed to ensuring the highest ethical standards are observed when sourcing their diamonds and jewelry as well. Whether you're customizing an engagement ring, designing a diamond stud earring, online jeweler Blue Nile will allow you to create a bigger, more brilliant piece than you can imagine at a price you won't find at a traditional jeweler. Expert advice 24-7. They have legendary service with 30-day returns. When you commit to a piece, so does Blue Nile. Guaranteed service and repair for life. Diamond price guarantee. You can contact Blue Nile to compare a competitor's diamond against one of theirs. In most cases, they can meet or even beat that price. If it's not perfect, that's no problem either. They have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. You can shop stress-free with guarantee free shipping and returns if also, if you need your special gift fast, they can accommodate that. Blue Nile can deliver overnight in most cases. Every order is also insured and arrives in discreet packaging. So this Mother's Day, give mom something she'll treasure forever with the fine jewelry from BlueNile.com. And Locked On Tigers listeners are getting $50 off of $500. This podcast exclusive is only good through Mother's Day. So use code Locked On. That's code Locked On. And... Every order is insured, ships free, and like I said, it arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. So you can shop stress-free and find your forever peace at BlueNile.com today. All right, everybody, we are back here for segment two at Locked On Tigers. Thanks for making Locked On Tigers your first listen every day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast, recaps of MLB games with analysis from our local experts Taking fans through the season like no other network. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Let's get into the pitching. Uh, Let's do Michael Pineda. We'll do Michael Pineda now, and then we'll do uh, bullpen in segment three, I guess. So 
Pineda was, I mean, fantastic, obviously, right? I mean, he was sensational. It, it was a good performance. It really was. Uh, no, sh I mean, no runs. Shut out through five. Can't ask for too much better than that in somebody's debut. Swings and misses didn't induce too many. It wasn't like a problem. I mean, clearly, but it also wasn't alarmingly low either. Like he had four whiffs in five innings. Ideally, I guess you'd like that to be a little higher, but like that's a fine number. And in his more recent years, he has become a pitch to contact pitcher, which in Comerica is going to play very well and clearly did in this game. I mean, the first six outs, I, I want to say like almost all of them were fly balls into the outfield. Uh, so we'll, we'll take it. If you play, if you want to play Comerica Park like a fiddle, baby, go for it. All you, as long as you're, you're, you're rocking an old English D. So really solid performance. The four scene was good. I think the biggest thing for me, I, I knew there wasn't going to be a lot of whiffs and there wasn't going to be a ton of strikeouts, but I was very impressed with how many times he got dudes looking at the plate. Like it was it, it, it was really impressive. Ten called strikes in his five-inning performance. Uh, nine of them on the four-seam fastball. Very, very impressive number. Um, so I, I think that all around, I mean, clearly, great performance. Didn't allow any runs. Uh, got hard hit for some of his pitches a little bit. But when you throw the fastball that frequently, it's probably going to happen sometimes. Another thing that really impressed me was he was just pounding the strike zone, pounding the zone, 40 strikes on 60 pitches, pounding the zone. And, and I love that. Again, we know he's a pitch to contact pitcher. And on top of that, we are in Comerica. We are in one of the biggest parks in baseball. Utilize it. Make them beat you. And I know it's the big, bad Yankees and, and all that, you know, everybody on their team can hit 20 home runs if they wanted to prove it. This is Comerica. This isn't Yankee Stadium. Aaron Hicks got punked on national TV, and that's hilarious. He thought he got a hold of one, and then he forgot that he wasn't in his Little League park and was like, oh, shoot. You know, I, I think I tweeted out he had like a 380 expected batting average, and he was standing there watching it. 380 expected batting average in Comerica Park, and you stood at the home plate and watched it. Yeah, that, that, that brought me a little smile to my face. Um, I actually like Aaron Hicks a lot. Just It's always funny when opponents think they get a hold of one at Comerica, and it's like, yeah, clearly the, <laughs> this is your first rodeo because it ain't ours. Um, so, yeah, all in all, Pineda looked really solid, really, really solid, and that is why we have him. That's why we brought him in. to He's going to be extended longer as the season goes on. This was obviously his first start in a Tigers uniform. And he only had a couple of starts in Toledo. Uh, the first one, I think he only went like three innings. The second one, I think he only went three or four as well. So he's, he's going to start getting stretched out now. But if he can give us solid five or six innings here for the first month, I mean, if he can do that all season, honestly, that's that's a win out of your fourth or fifth start of the rotation. Uh, but for now, I mean, if he's going to, if he's going to keep in, in not being afraid of hitters, just don't draw walks. And, and, and I can live with the lack of strikeouts. Just keep the walk numbers down. Attack people. Sometimes you might get lit up. Sometimes you might get babbipped to hell. That's okay. All right. I'll, I'll live with it. Just pound the strike zone. Don't give up free bases. Make the hitters beat you. And you're going to have some games like this too where they just can't. Really, really impressed with Michael Pineda. Really loved the signing, as you all know, that listened over the offseason. Loved the signing when it happened. Was big on him before we even signed him. Wanted us to bring him in. Really glad he's here. So really, really good outing. First outing as a Detroit Tiger for Big Mike. We will get into the bullpen. And then a roster move was just announced that I am thrilled about. We'll get into that right after I tell you about BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your sports betting stats and info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs and the start of the Major League Baseball season. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting, playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn about the trends and action. Bet Online, where the game starts.
All right, everybody. Welcome back to segment three, our third and final segment here at Locked On Tigers. Thanks for making Locked On Tigers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. Go check us out on the tube. Um, okay, let's get into the bullpen because it was phenomenal. Well, a little bit of a hiccup once, but it was really solid. It pumped me up. We had a shutout. Not going to complain too terribly much about anybody in a shutout win against an offense like the New York Yankees. All right. Jacob Barnes. Again, the cutter. Look, the, the cutter in this game got cranked twice. And one of them was very close to being a home run, as we talked about earlier with the Aaron Hicks at bat. Um, but the four-seam fastball, I thought, was really solid today. So he's in that that two-pitch mix. We, we've seen a lot of games, I, I think almost every game he's been in this year. There's been one of his two pitches has been really solid, and the other one was a little lackluster. I'm waiting for the game where both of them are fantastic. And I'm waiting for, you know, maybe a step in development where that can just become who Jacob Barnes is. Both of those pitches being effective at the same time. Because the cutter in this one, I thought, I, I traditionally have, well, traditionally, this whole season have really liked his cutter. The last two outings, it's been catching a lot more of the plate. It makes, you know, knees, weak, palms, or sweaty moments. All right. But the four seam in this one, I thought was dotted. I thought it was really effective. Uh, got put in play twice for re- weak contact. Didn't get any misses. We got a couple of called strikes. I, I-, I was impressed with the four seamer. The cutter, not as much as I have been the rest of the year. I'm just waiting. I'm patiently waiting for that moment where both of them are, are really effective in the same outing. All in all, though, Jacob Barnes is- continues to be uh, a really important piece to this bullpen and a guy that everybody – everybody knew needed to step up with all the injuries that we have, etc. Everybody, we need guys to step up, right? It's painfully obvious. Jacob Barnes has been that I would say so far this season. I don't think he's given up at, Oh, I don't even want to say it because last time I said it, Joe Jimenez started giving up runs left and right. His ERA is less than 0.01 to start off the season, Jacob Barnes. So I think you're going to start seeing him in some more high and high leverage situations. Willie Peralta is just the dog. What what a what a dog. He's got that dog in him. Phenomenal outing by Willie Peralta. Phenomenal. The splitter continues to be a, a work of art. The slider was really good today. I, I mean, the just turn it back the clock. Like he, he was pumping 97 a day. He almost hit 98. He almost threw 98 today. Just, just under. I mean, my goodness. I, I, I just, I very much appreciate Willie Peralta. And the, the cool thing about him is his versatility and ability to, he can give you the one inning and rear back and, and give you 97 right? But also he can give you, you know, your starter gets bounced early, maybe high pitch count early. He can go out there and give you three or four as well. And he's effective in both roles. This is a, a really, really, really solid Detroit Tigers front office find, and they deserve a lot of credit because he was really good last year. And he has been really, really good this year as well. Big fan of Willie Peralta, big fan. Alex Lang, the command struggled. The command struggled. He struggled with his command in this one. Um, I, I've been very open about the fact that this was going to happen. That he was going to have games where his command just wasn't there. I will say the second hit of that inning is a cheap hit. That shouldn't be counted against. Well, it's going to be counted against as a hit. You shouldn't take that as a knock against his outing. That's a cheap hit. That's weak contact. That's that. If it's hit a foot to the left, it's a ground out. It's a cheap hit. So whatever on that one, uh, the walk obviously can't happen. And the lead, I mean, 
two hits. Not not great. The command wasn't good. Like I said, I've been very open that that's how he is going to work this year. The stuff, however, was still fantastic. Still got the nice swing and the miss on the slider. Still has good movement. The four seam is still ever solid. Uh, it's never going to be a stuff problem. It's all going to be a command problem. And nobody's coming on here and saying that he's going to be the best reliever in all of baseball this year. He's going to have his moments, as, as he clearly has already had now two uh, on the young season. But when he's on, watch out. And thankfully, it didn't cost us anything in this game. Uh, but as I have said a plethora of times in this show and in the whole season and in spring training and going back to last year, the command is something that he obviously needs to work on. So not a great performance by Lang, not a great outing, uh, but was saved by the king and the closer don't get it twisted the closer Gregory Soto phenomenal outing by Greg my king that's Gregory Soto's music and you best believe it you best be terrified when you hear it because that's his music baby oh first pitch out of the pen a hundred dot low and away It's really nice to have, really nice to have coming out of your pen. I love him so much. That that was a big boy outing, man. It was that, that was a, that was a grown up outing and he deserves a ton of credit going in there. Bases loaded one out. We know he's had problems fielding in the past, made a great decision, accurate throw toss, whatever you want to call it. All good. He has to go through Rizzo. And Stanton, with one out and the bases loaded, gets out of it without getting up or giving up a run. Then goes to the ninth and was really not even competitive. There weren't even really any competitive at-bats against him. Just mowed him down. He's the man. He's the man. And, and we, we know that he is the closer. That's been announced a lot of times. And I think... It was very nice to see him get the ninth as well. Because I would have totally understood if they brought him out there for the end of the eighth. He gets out of it without giving up a run. Woo-hoo. Now we're going to go and get a fresh arm in there. Maybe a Fulmer. Maybe a Jimenez. Somebody else out there. Especially once we got two runs of cushion. Maybe it makes more sense to go to somebody else in there. Very impressed that he got out of the inning. Yay. But let's get a fresh arm in there for nine. And that was not... He really didn't even seem like it was considered. The ninth was his, and, and and he really stepped up and just had a phenomenal performance. 100 mile an hour sinker to start off the outing. Threw the slider one time, weak contact on that. He's the man. He's the man, and I will love him forever. Really impressive outing. Okay, so the Tigers win this one 3-0. We talked about everything, I think. That we wanted to talk about uh, the Miggy thing. Don't don't let anybody tell you to stop booing the Yankees ever. Right decision, wrong decision, don't matter. They deserve it. Let's get three K tomorrow against Colorado. Um, Michael Pineda solid. Yeah, the only other thing to talk about: Bo Brisky's getting the call up, baby. Sunday is Bo Brisky day, and I am pumped. I am pumped. Bo Brisky, been been a huge fan of his uh, ever since, well, last season. Like a lot of people, wasn't really on anybody's radar until last season. One Tigers minor league pitcher of the year last season. Had a very, very impressive summer. um, But was kind of overlooked, even though we won minor league pitcher of the year for the Tigers. Uh, was kind of overlooked because Riley Green won player of the year and Riley Green's the big-name prospect, so it wasn't really talked about as much as maybe he should have. Really, really good change-up, really lively change-up. Came on to the show last season as well. You can go back and, and refine and re-listen to that one. Uh, at the end of last year, we, we brought him on for an interview. Great kid. Also talks a lot about uh, his mindset on the bump, what he's working on developing, Uh, what he wants to improve on, that kind of stuff. Really good changeup, man. Really good changeup. Solid fastball. We saw him in spring. He looked really solid in spring as well. 
just all around super, super cool guy, super good pitcher, and I am very excited for him to make his MLB debut on Sunday where he will get the start. Super pumped. And, I mean, against the Rockies, not a very great offense. I'm pumped. I'm really pumped. Um, So, yeah, happy Friday. We'll be back on Monday, hopefully, recapping. Uh, you know what? Let's let's just go all out. Hopefully, we are recapping a series sweep, a Bo Brisky good performance and win, and 3K from Miguel Cabrera. Let, let's try let, – the next time we talk, let's try to get all of those things accomplished. All right? I'll see you then. Thanks for making Lots on Tigers your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, Locked On MLB. Host Paul Francis Sullivan, please call him Sully, brings you his unique perspective on the major leagues, both past and present. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Same time, same place. I'll see you all Monday. Hopefully, hopefully talking about those three things. Peace and love. Going to therapy's dope, and I'll catch you all then, baby. Go Tigers.